Hello everybody, welcome back to your weekday weekend. My name is Adam and I'm back with another CAD themed video. Um, if you haven't seen the last one, wow, you guys have really, really helped that one to blow up. So I appreciate everybody who's new here. Um, normally I don't do CAD stuff as I'm, I'm just a beginner who likes to 3D print. But um, it's been taken off and after the last video about Alibre, I've been encouraged to try other offerings from other companies so today we're actually just going to try the fusion 360 hobbyist version um i've been pushed towards it now so far i'm going into this fairly blind i've never used fusion 360 before um being completely honest uh i've heard bad things honestly i've heard the people that use it every day and who have always used it seem to love it and the people who don't seem to not want to use it and the reason that i normally see is that the free hobbyist version has been um, watered down over the past few years with the 10 active document rule and all that removal of some tools and things like that i know the 10 active documents is not a big deal depending on on what you're doing but um it's worth noting it's worth mentioning that all of this is just kind of hearsay um it's just the things i've heard about the software um, none of it is necessarily true um, some of it I'm sure is, but these are the things that I've heard about the software, such as you might have heard certain things about other softwares, which would influence your decision when it comes to maybe buying or trying that software. So that's why I'm mentioning these things, and I'm going to mention these um, for every other software that I try in future videos like this one. It's also worth noting that as of recording this video, uh, Autodesk has become completely transparent and said that, yeah, the price is going up next year which I think is absolutely ridiculous because it's already unobtainable for most people. So quite honestly, I think that's stupid. And um, there is no one-time payment option. You have to pay monthly or yearly. They offer a three-year version, which doesn't save you any money. So I don't know why you would do that. Anyway, so I applied for the free hobbyist version, which I thought was hilarious because it has me create an account. And then it basically asked me for the same information I just used to create an account. So if you look... Um, I have to complete this information here, um, which I'm going to be blurring, but you have to put in your email again, and then your first, last name, and a work phone, which is interesting that it asks for because it says it's only for non-commercial projects. I don't really have a work phone, so I'm just going to put in my, my cell phone, and if they call me, I'm going to be blocking their number, but, you know, we'll see. Put in my state, I'm in Michigan, postal code. It's a lot of, a lot of stuff. Privacy statement. Out of curiosity. So they're going to combine personal information from what they collect from, uh, from me. Um, and then they're also going to collect from everybody else to get as much info on you as possible. That's good to know. They collect your information for these reasons. So the second reason here is to sell you stuff. Strategic business decisions, which is more selling you stuff. To send you information, tutorials and stuff, but also sell you stuff. Sell you stuff. We disclose categories of information described above to the following categories of purpose. Person. They'll share your information with all these people. They're selling information to people who support them with marketing, sales, consulting, communications, software maintenance, and support analytics, social media, market research, auditing for valid use, license, compliance, security, user validation, localization. Wow. So they're selling my info to everybody. Maybe I don't want to do this. So yes, guys, obviously I do know that it's next to impossible to make sure that your information stays private and companies don't sell it or share it or give it away or whatever. And I know that using Google and Apple devices and smartphones and literally anything on the internet and, you know, being a YouTuber, your information is going to get out there. But I'm just outlining how much info that Autodesk specifically is going to sell because I'd like to try to minimize at least the amount of information about me that's out there. So um, it's just worth looking into, honestly. Yeah, so it's opt in to, to have them not sell your information. So, so far, that's a negative for Fusion 360. I really do not like that, that it's opt in for them to, or opt out, I'm sorry, for them selling whatever you want to say. They're going to sell your information to whoever they want to unless you tell them not to. So that's fantastic. Thousands of dollars hundreds of dollars, however much, and they're selling your information. So that's good. 
Sorry, I'm already on a negative light here, guys. Hopefully the, the program is better than the initial information grabbing stuff, because so far, so far I'm not really feeling too good. Um, quite honestly, I don't know how Libres is, although I didn't give Libre that much information, I don't think. Maybe I did. I could be completely wrong. All right, well, I honestly uh, can't find a privacy policy on a Libre's website. I didn't look that long. But um, hopefully that means that they're not even considering to sell your information and it doesn't mean that they are selling it and they just don't want you to know. So um, I, I would lean towards the, the first um, because, again, Alibre has been super good to me. So hoping that's the case. Just wanted me to sign in again. Okay, that was painful. Welcome to Fusion 360. I, I don't want to... I'm not going to be collaborating. Why am I creating a team? Yes, yeah, thank you. Thanks. No, we're not... We're not sharing any of my data. Cool. Okay, so by default it opens in a tiny window. I don't know how I feel about that, but... Anyway, that's just a difference. Okay. So... I can't rotate my, is it both? Shift click, control click, shift alt. Okay, so. All right, so maybe I'm crazy, but I have no idea how to how to there we go so I have to switch the that okay so the move tools are kind of weird you have to click on orbit to orbit and then like You can use middle click to pan like most other softwares I've used, but as soon as you use middle click, you can no longer orbit. I don't know what this is that I'm doing here. But oh, I Oh, okay. I've I've already screwed something up. I've made a sketch somehow. Or started a sketch. I don't know I'm I don't know with what plane. A two point rectangle. I I didn't know I made one. Okay. Let's try to make a sketch, shall we? Um, okay, create a sketch. On which... Um, so I... That's... No. Okay. So I should... Sorry, I should mention what I'm trying, what I'm going to be trying to do to make is a cube with a hole through the middle, maybe some fillets. Something that, um, okay, that's, sure, we'll just go with this sketch. Uh, I can't wrap my head around the the controls or okay so i have been on the right plane it just hasn't looked like it because even though it's showing me this the cube on the corner shows this so i have been on the right plane that i wanted it just hasn't looked like it now it's now it is okay um that was, I'm, so for a lot of this is going to sound like I'm getting angry, and to some small extent I am, and that's just because the two or three softwares that I have used have all worked the same way. I know Fusion 360 is super popular, and if you started by learning on Fusion 360, then all this kind of stuff is super easy to you. But uh, to me, it's just getting a little iffy and seems kind of weird some things, and maybe there's things I'm missing because on purpose I'm not watching tutorials. So uh, this is just my upfront 
first impressions of the software and that's kind of the point here so back to what we're doing here okay um a two-point rectangle is probably what i'm going to end up doing um can i do a center point rectangle i can okay i prefer to do a center point rectangle it does snap to the origin that's good it's snapping to dimensions which i honestly don't like snapping is it d for dimension tool it is d for dimension tool look at that okay let's do 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters all right there's equal all my constraints are up here that's kind of nice honestly they're nice and big buttons to click on um, so if I undo and I do equal that and that, nice, and then D for dimension and I do 50. All right, cool. And then how do I extrude this? Um, we're just going to do finish sketch, I think. I don't seem to see anything that's obviously an extrude from here. And then we're going to, that's sheet metal, extrude by 50 millimeters. I, click on the orbit tool. That is bugging me that the orbit tool is not like default. Okay. Cool. Um... Then I'm going to create a sketch on that. And then we're going to do a center diameter hole on the origin again. And we're going to do di uh, diameter of, we'll say, 25. And uh, finish sketch. Extrude a hole. type a simple um two um there what <laughs> what I don't understand. Whatever. Hole. Extends. Just through all is fine. I can't press OK. Why? Um. Hmm. From sketch or at point. I don't know what that means. Face. Oh, is that for making like, that's for making like a drill tap hole or whatever. I can just extrude that um, operation cut um, um, distance. Um, set type two. I have to use this. Why can I not flip? There we go. Do there. Okay. Did that work? I can't tell because I can't orbit. There we go. That did work. Okay. So we have a hole that way. We'll make another hole actually. Create a sketch there. C is C center hole. It is. Look at that. It's already grabbing center point for me. That's nice. 25. Is that fully constrained? I don't know. Um, I'm assuming black is fully constrained. There we go. So that is fully constrained now. Um, did I fully constrain the other one? 
Lord knows. Um, okay, now extrude. Um, um, extent type two, and then operation cut. I have to go to this side and do there. Um, I don't, why is this not working? Ugh. Why I I can't wrap my head around the tools for how to how all this is supposed to work. Okay. I I wish orbit was a mouse a mouse button. Okay. Anyway, let's do some fillets. Right there, 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 right there. Right there. And not get that one. There we go. And then. I, I, right there, right there, and right there. Escape key gets rid of that. Okay. And let's make the fillet 2.0 millimeters. Okay. Sweet. We have our cube with two holes through the center. Um, sweet. And then it took me a long time. Honestly, so, so far, so I know a lot of people are going to be getting mad at me because I'm overreacting, and to some extent I am. Um, but I have used a couple other softwares and aside from the fillets, like this could be done in Tinkercad so quickly and I could do this in Onshape or Libre so quickly. And it's because for whatever reason, unless there's something I'm missing, which there very well probably is, um, the m movement controls in Fusion 360 are wild to me. Why is it that as soon as I pan, I lose the orbit? Um, so I, I'm, maybe there's something I'm missing. Um, so far though, I mean, it works. Um, it, I can tell it's very powerful. It looks kind of unpolished actually, oddly enough, like the, um, the menus <laughs> seem a little weird. Of course, I mean, the Libres don't look a ton better, I guess, but, um, I don't know. I don't really know what, how to say what I'm meaning to say. Um, um, hopefully, um, So I did just create that in a couple minutes. Um, so, I mean, overall, it looks fine. Um, how easy is it to export? Let's see about that. Show data panel file. Um, export? Oh, hang on. There's just a 3D print button. What's that? Oh, shit. File uh, 3D print. Oh. I can just export a STL right there. Okay, that's interesting. Or I can do a 3MF or an uh, OBJ. Interesting. Or I can just export an STL or a step. That's also interesting. I wonder what the difference between an STL here and an X STL for file 3D print is. 3D print. Selection, what? I, it wants me to click on the STL. 
refinement high i'm guessing that means like quality send to utility no press okay okay export as cube uh f360 um type stl sure I guess it worked. Um, so it doesn't look like it auto saves. Um, I am not actually going to save. Actually, no, I will save it just as untitled, honestly. Let's see if it imports to the slicer correctly in the right orientation, shall we? Let's open this in Orca slicer here and see if it is in the right orientation because I did sketch on the XY plane. Okay, so it does look like it opened it uh, in the correct orientation, the STL quality looks pretty good. Um, I'm assuming I can in increase the quality if I wanted to. That's not too bad. So, yeah. I mean, it worked. So, yeah. Alright guys, so in conclusion, yeah, I mean, it's Fusion 360. A lot of you already know how to use Fusion 360, and a lot of you guys have been using it for years. Um, that was my first time ever getting into it, and I'm sure I'm missing a lot of things, so please don't roast me too bad in the comments. Um, I, on purpose, didn't look at any tutorials on how to use Fusion 360. On purpose, I did it completely blind, just using my experience in Onshape, Alibre, and Tinkercad. That's all I have with, like, 20 minutes in FreeCAD. Um, and like five minutes in open scat. So that's all the experience I have. And I probably have under 50 models experience total in the other softwares. So anyway, um, aside from the movement, everything seems okay. If I could move around that cube easier, Fusion 360 would have gone way faster. So there's probably some kind of keyboard commands I'm missing for movement, but I wish my orbit and pan were in the same tool. I didn't have to to move tools along the bottom. That seems so weird. Because why can't pan just be middle click and orbit just be uh, left click or right click or something? So anyway, that other than that, it seemed fine. The STL looks all right. Um, XY plane was in fact the XY plane in the slicer. So yeah, it seems good. Um, there was a little, there's some questions about their data sharing. So if you don't mind that, then it's fine. But if you're someone like me that is really trying to make sure your data isn't out there, I mean, it, I'm sure it already is. But if you're trying to limit how much data companies can sell about you, about you, then maybe consider opting out or, um, not choosing Fusion 360. Again, I don't know how much a Libre is selling on me. So I'm not trying to say that Fusion 360 is better or worse than anybody else. But that's something to consider. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me uh, and watching The Struggle. And I'll see you guys next time, next weekend. Bye!